Will we ever see a return of the long blonde hair? <laughs> I, to be honest, the blonde. I don't we won't think, tell the wife. Blonde, but. I don't think is is an option. Grey probably. Grey is coming through quite strong. A um, silver fox. I am considering to get the long hair black, but uh, the, uh, the long hair back. But um, yes, I'll go for the for the Richard Gear next time. A long, <laughs> long silver. Hair, that's it. <laughs> no blonde, unfortunately. Well. Time for the big conversation. An ordinary chat show. Extraordinary people, the big conversation. Let's go. Uh, the fact that I've got my name on the back has uh, made me feel very, That's a very nice special. Touch. That um, is a nice touch. Yeah, with uh, obviously just no soft cushion there, and me having a little bit of an injury on the um, hamstring. Yeah. Oh, Mike's sitting quite that. tough uh, for the last couple of minutes. But, no, uh, rehab is tough. So, yeah. But the fact it's got my name on, that yeah. made me feel quite special. Makes so it all right. It. It makes it worth it, eh? <laughs> especially the pain. So. <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Before we talk about rugby, living in South Africa as a child, did you have any job aspirations in school? Um, I've always been into sport quite a bit. I have older brother, so uh, that made things a little bit more competitive. But um, I always wanted to be a lawyer yeah. from uh, from a young age. Strange route. That's not the rugby the yeah, world. Yeah, a little it? bit different. Uh, just thought, um, seen a couple of movies. Always looks quite quite fun. So <laughs> you wanted to wear a suit. <laughs> yeah, you get paid to argue with people. So, <laughs> um, so you, I mean, obviously, you said you got an older brother. So you played, started playing rugby quite young, I assume, in the house, maybe. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I was with all the brother, obviously. I think around the age of three, four, we started playing in the backyard. Yeah. Um, and with him being older, obviously quite competitive. Yeah. So it was always. Well, you always want to beat him at everything. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, Show so, him up. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. So, and um, I think that's what gave me the drive to to actually become a professional sportsman. Weekend was basically was sports weekend. Saturday yeah. comes, everyone had their seat in the house. Yeah, yeah. Um, game probably start 10, 20 minutes into game. I had my rugby ball in the arm, called my brother, and so we were going outside. And yeah, then yeah. just last 10 minutes or so, we come back to watch the the final bit of it all. See how it ended. Yeah, yeah all dirty. Played our own little game. Um, so it was quite good. So did you watch the '95 World Cup? On I actually I watched it from home. My dad my dad went to the game in Johannesburg. Um, Obviously, I was very, very jealous about it, but... Um, so yeah, how, old, how old were you at that time? That was 95. I was about 12 or 13, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so my dad ended up bringing me, like, the match day program, uh, Springbok yeah. jersey, all these things, awesome. um, which just so much more exciting. And um, I, th I still have all the, all the stuff my dad gave me from the 95 World Cup, the yeah. match day program, everything, so... Um, well, it's it, a nice bit of memorabilia to keep, yeah, isn't it? Played a, played a massive part in motivating <laughs> me to... to I like pursue my dreams and do what I want to do. So when did you sort of know that professional rugby was what you wanted, rather than it just being a hobby? Like when did you know that you wanted to really take it to the professional level? Um, like I said, I got a contract when I was in my final year of school. Um, still 18, 18 years old. Yeah. Um, so I thought back then, listen, I'll give it a go. Um, yeah. I did still have to do my studies. Uh, studies eventually, two years later, I took a, took a back seat. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I was fortunate enough at the age of 19, 20 to play my first senior game. Yeah. And um, that, that was the moment where I thought to myself, listen, it's either now or never. So you need to, I need to make a plan and do everything I can to, uh, to make this dream come true. So you played for the Bulls in South Africa, did you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, I was there for about 11 years. Bulls. Yeah. And in that time, you in 2006, which was just after you joined the Bulls, is that right? Yeah, I actually joined the Bulls straight out of school. Uh, Played um, under under 19, under 20, and then um, played my first senior game at the age of 20. Because uh, you play you play state and Super Rugby games. Yeah, we've got a bit of a different yeah. competition. We've got the uh, Vodacom Cup, uh, Curry Cup, and Super Rugby. And Super Rugby obviously being the main one, and Curry Cup being more domestic competition. Yeah. Um, so I played my first Curry Cup game at the age of well 2003, I think, and then my first Super Rugby game at the age of 2005. Yeah, and then. 2006, the following year, you played your first game for South Africa. Yeah, I played your my first, first test, test match. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a day before my 22nd birthday. Wow. 
Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, yeah. I'm still it's remember a nice that. birthday present. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty good. Um, Did I get Scotland? In Scotland, Scotland, in Durban, yeah, yeah. The, the 10th of June, 2006. Yeah. I remember the day yeah. exactly, yeah. And of course, then the following year, you were in the World Cup squad. Yeah, like I was fortunate enough to, to make the World Cup squad. We had, a, we had an unbelievable year at the Bulls 2007, being yeah. uh, the first South African side to win the Super Super 12 back then. Yeah. Um, and we had an unbelievable side, like I said, with Lux Brian Abana, Victor Matthews, Bucky's Berta, Frida Prea, all these these international stars. And um, Did you feel confident going into the, when you sort of set off in the World Cup campaign, did you feel confident that you could make it? Yeah, definitely. We had a we had a, a good build up to the World Cup. A um, couple of good games, mass, a long trip um, up to UK before the World yeah. Cup. Uh, but first game against Samoa came, boys the well. Um, we had a bit of a tough one against Tonga, um, and the boys just knew. Listen, the the, the possibility is definitely there. Uh, we had a, a decent group, nothing too difficult, and um, I think the the main thing was we, we knew if things go away, we we either get. Argentina, we wouldn't play um, the All Blacks in the semis or so. If we do yeah. meet up with them, it would either be in the, in the final. Um, so things worked out quite well for us back then. It must have been a fun couple of weeks. And of course, you won the World Cup that year. It must have been like a highlight of your career, surely. Yeah, most day, after winning the Super Rugby uh, to win the World Cup, it's yeah. it's two back-to-back. Um, it's a pretty good year. You just it called it a day unbelievable that, season yeah. for us. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the, the World Cup 2007 in France is definitely one of my most memorable um, experiences in, yeah. in, in my rugby career. And not just the World Cup finals, but the whole event, um, the organisation, mm. everything was just unbelievable. Uh, being 23 years old, being able yeah. to play in a World Cup final. What a holiday that is. Just, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. So, and I was yeah. fortunate enough to have my mom and dad there, which was nice to share that with them. Um, yeah. And like I said, definitely one of my most memorable experiences. And obviously you played for South Africa a number of times over the following years, but you, you stayed at the Bulls until 2013, is that right? Or was it 2012? Yeah. I, I left um, the Bulls off the this, off this Super Rugby season in 2012 to go play a season in Japan. Yeah. Um, How was that? That's quite a contrast, isn't it? To yeah, in South it, was, it was different at that time. We weren't a lot of South Africans playing in, in Japan at the time, a lot of foreigners, and that's, should I say. Um, but unbelievable experience living in Tokyo, um, yeah. playing a, a little bit of a different game. and, and, and where training used to be an hour, hour and a half, now we're training two to three hours. Because yeah. um, a lot of the, the Japanese guys aren't um, professional, they're semi-professional, still working for the company. But the experience living in Tokyo was was unbelievable. And yeah. um, it, it's definitely something I would have enjoyed doing again. Is it a cool city to live in? Yeah, Tokyo is com- something completely different. It's like a little world on its own. Yeah. Obviously, not, not a lot of things are in English there. Um, and just Tokyo being one of the biggest cities in the Did world. Did you learn any Japanese while you were there? We were, it was in my contract. We had lessons, uh, me and my missus. Um, it was a good experience. I can, I can still remember a little bit, but not much about it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, after we went to France, so my, my French was a bit better than my, my Japanese at this stage. Yeah, well, I was going to say, because you went to France to play in Montpellier uh, for the next year. What was the attraction of Montpellier in particular? Um, I wouldn't say Montpellier per se. It was more like I've got a little bit of French heritage. Um, yeah. So France was always a, in, my, in the back of my mind. I wanted to learn to speak French, uh, a different language, and French was one of them. Um, so when the opportunity come, came up to, to go play in France, um, Montpellier was doing stuff on saying Montpellier at the time, and uh, yeah. obviously Montpellier being down by the beach. Yeah. Uh, Fabien Galtier was a coach. He was a, a big drawing point for me. Mm-hmm. Um, just to learn from him and his rugby experience, because um, he's obviously one of the, the French great. French greats, um, yeah. yeah. So um, it ended up being Montpellier, and um, just what a what a three years it ended up being. Yeah, you really enjoyed it there, living there, and, and the different yeah, that, culture. That, South that, Africa, Japan, France is quite a, a contrast each time, isn't it? Yeah, I've been very fortunate, like I said, to to have lived in Japan, France, yeah. uh, now England. Um, it's been a it's been an unbelievable career, and I've been very very fortunate to experience all these things. Yeah. Um, so. After you stayed in there, it was three seasons in Montpellier. Yeah, you joined Worcester. Um, what was it that made you decide to come to the Premiership? Um, when I left Montpellier, um, I had a bit of a f- fallout with 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 the coach. Uh, left there um, without having any other options at that stage because I still had another season on my contract. Yeah. Um, I was almost almost ready to say, listen, if if this is it, then it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I played for the Barbarians, played actually for the Barbarians against, against Worcester. Worcester. Yeah, yeah, 
which ended up being a, a good thing. I had one or two other options around England at, at the time. Uh, but you always kind of looked at the Premiership and said, one day I'd like to come and try English rugby? Or, yeah, or I think there's a couple of boys. Uh, George Smith is one of them who, who's played in probably all the major competitions in the world. And, yeah. and, and just to compare the difference between South Africa, the Super Rugby back then, International Rugby, Japan, France, Top 14, and now Premiership, um, it's unbelievable. You can't actually... Is it like playing a different game in each country? It's completely yeah. different. Yeah. I think I think the Premiership from a couple of years back to now has changed completely from the physical game now to basically all the round game where you've got physicality, uh, you've got speed, um, yeah. you've got literally everything. And I think that's one of the reasons why England rugby is what it is at this moment. Um, yeah. And obviously with, with a coach like Eddie Jones um, and uh, the play, quality players like Owen Farrell, Henry Slade, um, you know, there's hundreds of boys like I mentioned. Um, yeah. And I think that's why Premiership currently is the best competition in the world. And yeah. that's why everyone wants to come to England th um, at this stage. So you have enjoyed your time at Six Ways uh, so far? Yeah the, yeah, the the trip down to Six Ways has been unbelievable. Uh, the fans, the, the, the my club mates, um, the club in general is unbelievable. Yeah. They looked after me and the, and the family really, really well. Um, we can't really complain about that. Um, I think if there's one thing I need to, I can complain about, it's probably the English weather. Oh, there that, we go. that is probably something uh, that I can't get used to. But yeah. um, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. Here's my third season, and um, we are thinking of making England home permanently. Yeah. So um, it's been that enjoyable. Well, we'd be glad to have you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, Maybe on a slightly more sombre note, has there ever been a time, in, I mean, you mentioned about maybe after Montpellier that you've considered moving away from playing rugby professionally. Uh, yeah, I, I did think at that stage, um, I think there was about two months or so where I was considering playing or not playing. Um, I was still 32 at the time. Yeah. Um, and it, it just a, a sense I had, I felt I had so much to contribute still to the game. Yeah. Um, obviously, I still wanted to play the game. Um, but once it's gone, it's gone. You can't go back yeah. and say, I should have played. I wanted to play another year. So I want to get most out of rugby. Rugby's been good to me. Um, and um, I just want to give back in a sense. Um, yeah. Obviously, the experience I've gained over the years, just drop a little bit of that down to some of the younger boys. We've got some unbelievable talent at, uh, at six ways, so like Josh Adams, Perry Humphreys, uh, Ryan Moles. Uh, Will Spencer. There's loads of boys. I think has got the talent to to play at the the highest level. And um, yeah. if I can contribute to that, just in a little sense, um, for me, it would be unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so, should we move on to the quick fire question round, which I know you had a little look at before, and I saw a smile on your face. So, if I ask you a series of questions. And you just give me the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, they do make me nervous. Don't, but, don't uh, think but too hard about it. Fire just, away. Just, yeah, yeah. Fire away. Okay, right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So if you can spend 15 minutes with any person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? I'd have to go with Richard Branson. I think um, okay. just his business sense and the way he, he attacks, attacks life and everything he does is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I do admire him quite a bit. Obviously what he's built with Virgin. And not just that, um, he's a big family man um, yeah. and he's got a, I won't say a perfect balance, but he's got a good balance to life. Yeah. Um, and he comes across as an awesome human being. I've had the privilege to actually meet him oh, have you? once before, but I actually never had a dinner or spent 15 minutes with him. So, yeah. I mean, you mentioned before before we turned the cameras on that you, you have an interest in business and you're finishing off your degree now. So is that something you'd look to go into maybe after you... You yeah, rugby? yeah, definitely. I think um, just living a, a balanced lifestyle is something I would like to do after rugby. Um, obviously, sport being a business on its own yeah. uh, doesn't give you a lot of opportunity to do anything else because um, you're constantly busy, you're constantly training. Um, a lot of boys these days are trying to get their degrees done. Uh, I wasn't fortunate enough to do that because um, traveling with playing for the Springboks and Super Rugby was a lot back then. Um, so I am trying to finish that now. Yeah. Um, and, and that's something that six, uh, the Warriors has given me to, the opportunity to finish my degree. Yeah. And um, like I say just having that balanced lifestyle between study, uh, work, and, and trying to play rugby is, is something I'm really looking into. Perfect. All right, question number two. Okay. We've spoken about the various places you've played, uh, but what is your favorite place you've ever lived? Probably say south of France. South of France. Yeah, right. South of it's France. It's hard to the South of France. Isn't Mediterranean. It? Yeah. What more can you ask for? Sunshine. 
<laughs> yeah, happy yeah. days. Um, if you weren't a professional rugby player, what would you be doing now? I'd probably be living in a van somewhere on a beach, um, surfing, um, living off the land, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Ambitious. Uh, if, okay, this is, a, this is the deep question. If you could only keep one memory from your entire career, say you had to put it in like a time capsule thing and just nothing else existed, what would it be? Uh, I think the World Cup final is definitely. That's a there. hard one to yeah, beat. Yeah, that's. It, I've, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to have a, a couple of good ones. Um, yes, and I, I think I've had a couple of victories against the All Blacks, but there was one specific one against the uh, All Blacks in Rustenburg, South Africa, which was pretty special. Yeah. That's the first one I, I've actually ever beaten All Blacks. So that's always, always up there. So it's quite a difficult one to choose between those those yeah. couple. The World Cups definitely are hard yeah, no, to overlook, right, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely um, up there. Who is the toughest opponent you've ever come up against? Um, there was a French guy called Yannick Zujan. He was, I was young, I was 22 at the time when I played him, so he did hit me quite hard a couple of times. Uh, Nonu was always a big one. Yeah. Um, and then I think as a youngster also, Matt Gitta was, he's small, he's rapid, he's strong. He's like you won't say if you just look at it, but he's a strong yeah. player. So, so Gitz is definitely up there. Slightly more, less serious question. What was your first car? I don't know if you know, it's a Ford Meteor and it was maroon. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the prettiest of cars and it's a sedan, so that's even worse. It was, uh, it was really ugly, to be honest. I'm sure you've upgraded since then. <laughs> yeah. um, would you rather have a takeaway or go out for a meal? I go out for a meal. Every, every yeah. day of the week? Go every day of the week, dinner, nice restaurant, nice little steak. Uh, maybe steak, a bit of red wine, maybe. Definitely some yeah. red wine. Oh, there. You have to compare the two, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, right. This question's interesting. If you were a professional darts player, Ooh. what would your walkout song be? Yes. One song I, that I you want everyone to think hear. say probably I the Tiger, but I think I have to go with uh, Lincoln Park and Jay Z Numb. <laughs> that is a good choice. That, um, that does suck me up before games, though. Yeah. So is I that what you listen to before a game? That's one of the songs, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. definitely there. That's a great answer. Um, right, the final question. Will we ever see a return of the long blonde hair? <laughs> I, I, to be honest, the blonde... I don't we won't think, tell the wife. Blonde, I don't think, is, is an option. Grey, probably. Grey is coming through quite strong. A um, silver fox. I am considering it to get the long hair back, but... Uh, the, uh, the long hair back, but... Um, Yes, I'll go for the, for the Richard Gere next time. A long, <laughs> long survey, that's it. <laughs> no blonde, unfortunately. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure to have you on, and we hope to have you on again, again sometime. Thank you very no, much. Thanks, I really Cheers. appreciate it. It's been good fun. No worries.